I want us to worship God once again. This moment, I want us to call God His name. I want you to call Him His name. The I am that I am, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the lily of the valley. I want us to call Him His name. The Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I want us to call God His name. The mighty man in battle. Let's begin to call him his name. Let's call him his name. Our maker. Our father. Let's call him his name. The father of the fatherless. I want us to, to call him his name. Let's call him his name. Jesus will worship you. Lord, we adore you. Lord, we adore you. Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah El Shaddai. Jehovah Rapha, we worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. I want us to call him his name. He is God. He is God. He is God. He is our Savior. Let's, let's, let's call him his name. The Lord of Lords, the God of Gods. I want us to, to call him his name. Jesus, we worship you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There is no one like him. There is no one like him. There is no one like him. Let's worship him. Jesus wants to bless you. Thank you, Jesus, for this privilege once again, Lord Jesus. We are not taking it for granted. Oh, God, we worship him. Oh, God, we worship him. Jesus, we worship your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want us to sing this song to worship his name. Alleluia. want us to pray prayer this evening for ourselves because I discovered something you see the move of God in our midst now I discovered that it is no longer for the babes so if you come here and you are not praying for growth in God or that the Lord should open your understanding I am telling you you are just going to come here and go back the way you have come. I want us to pray this evening. Please, I, I, I want us to open to the Bible. Let's see the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 1 and 2. Quickly, please. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 1 and 2. The Bible said, And high brethren could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. He said, I have fed you with meek and not with meat, for either so ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. I want us to pray for ourselves. You see, it is just my discovery when the man of God was preaching last week, Wednesday. And I discovered that so many of us we were lost in what he was actually saying and if God will not help us to grow and come up then we are going to come here and waste our time I want us to pray for ourselves this evening and say Jesus Lord let me grow in you Holy Spirit of God let me grow in you in the name of God you see there are some ways that God we, we just do some, something that is very very important is that God we always send this one but when he said that we are not ready to take it that is what this verse 2 was saying he said neither yet now you, you are able to bear it I want us to pray and say Jesus let me grow in you in the name of Jesus oh Father Lord help us Lord in the name of Jesus Holy Spirit Lord you will help us Lord Jesus to grow in you in the name of Jesus 
For in Jesus' name have we prayed. You see, that time when God told the people of Israel that it is time for you to move, God was trying to tell them that, you see, the next thing that I want to do, if you are going to be worthy of it, if you are going to partake of it, then you must move from this level that you are. I want us to pray and say, Jesus, this evening, Holy Spirit of God, Lord, let me grow in you in the name of Jesus. Bring me into the place of spiritual understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, God, you will help us this evening in the name of Jesus. That our time here, Lord Jesus, will not be a waste in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, help us. Jesus, help us now in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' name have we prayed. And lastly, I want us to pray. You see, when a man is praying for all trans, when you pray for all trans, it is the place of understanding also must not be neglected. Because many a times when you are praying, when you, when you are speaking to men, when you are speaking to men and men do not come to the place of understanding, then what you are saying will still be a waste. I want us to pray and say, Jesus, we have come, Lord Jesus, this evening. For every one of us, Lord Jesus Christ, oh God, you will open our spiritual understanding in the name of Jesus. Open our spiritual understanding. Oh, Jesus, this is our plea this evening, Lord. In the name of Jesus, the Lord, you will help us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, we wait on you this evening, Lord. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' name have we prayed.
give you praise. We give you glory. Thank you for your mercies. And Father, we ask that once again, let our understandings be opened in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we ask that in your mercy, that your word will not waste over our lives in the name of Jesus. And that which you expect as a result, as a reward, may it be achieved in its fullness in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Can we have our seats in the presence of the Lord? Thank you. You can sit down. Uh, once again, welcome us to the presence of God. This is the cave of Adulam. And we ask that we put our right, our heart aright before the Lord. So that that which the Lord has in mind for us can be known and can be experienced. Please, uh, let's ensure that our mobile phone, that it on the vibration, probably they're on flight mode, they're on silence so that they are switched off so that we are not going to disturb the house of God. Please, don't assume that it's on silence. Check to see, check to see, check, check. Don't assume. And please, the time for us to give our offering was coming. So how we are going to do that? We are going to be led through it by the grace of God. And wherever the protocols are setting us to sit, please, let's ensure that we adhere to their instructions. And as we do so, the Lord bless us in Jesus' name. We have been looking at matters concerning the act of the Spirit. And one thing I want us to understand is that we don't have time. I you tell your neighbor, you don't have time. The reason why I'm saying this is because don't think that this act of the Spirit is what we are going to do till December. The one thing about God is that the amount of time that you are given to, to work with something, it is sufficient to bring out a result that the Lord is expecting. The Bible says concerning the people of history, that there are times that they are going to stay in a place and immediately the cloud moves. If they want to do something, if they have not done it before, they have no opportunity to do it again. Because God in his mercy has become progressive. So because of the progressiveness of the Lord, it is vital and it is important that whenever the Lord brings to us a word, don't expect because of it is going to be a series that you have a lot of time. Don't expect that because of it is a series that you have enough time if God is saying it is a month that we must use to do it, that a month is more than sufficient for us to come into that which the Lord is revealing to us. And tonight we are looking at the act of the Spirit again. And one of the things that the church is going to bring us into tonight is a place of repentance before the Lord. May we get there in Jesus' name. The book of Job, chapter 8, verse 7. To see you highly lifted up, shining in the light of your glory, pour out your power and love as we sing, holy, 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 I want to see. of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. You can do better to God. You are, you are praying, you are singing to the Lord. Oh, 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 oh,
the book of Job chapter 8 verse 7. The Bible said, Though thy beginning was small, he said, yet thy latter end should greatly increase. Mm. There is this is like talking from the presence, from the present, speaking about the past and even about the future. He said, you know when you use words, that is not some that is something that has happened. Abi? Hallelujah. And they said something should. That is something that there is an expectancy. That is, it is not something that it is something that is, is an, like, an expectation that has not happened. So the Bible said, even though thy beginning was small, the expectation is that your latter end that comes after should greatly increase. Hallelujah. Because one thing about the heart of the spirit is that when you despise little acts of the spirit or little beginnings, you close the door to the greater act of God in your life. When you despise or when you don't take note of the little acts of God, especially in the inside of you, you close the door to the greater acts of God in your life. So, the latter end that should greatly increase will never come. You will be trapped in the present, also to say, in the past. Until it might come to a place where he is faithful, and he is truly in line with that little, so-called little beginnings, or so-called little acts that the Lord is doing with his life. The Lord is helping us in Jesus' name. The book of Genesis. Chapter 6. Let's see verse 13. The Bible wants us to understand that. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me. And for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. I want to ask you a question. What is so spectacular about this thing? What is, like, what is so special about this verse? It doesn't feel as if Noah did any miracle. It's just us God speaking to Noah, yes or no. But do you know that this is the foundation of Noah building the ark that actually rescued a people? The beginnings of the act of God are not always big. That is what I'm trying to bring out for us. God didn't start talking to Noah that build an ark. It just came firstly as an instruction. Just as if you are doing your quiet time, and God is saying, "Let us study. Let me, let me, let me, let me, and you let us talk." And before you know it, the act of God to bring salvation in that time was given unto a man. But it didn't started small. It didn't started big rather. It started with a little act of like a conversation. Many of us, because we are not faithful to the very little act of God or the little beginning, so to say, in our life, we have indeed closed the door to so many great things that we should do. But we also understand concerning Moses that it was just like every normal day. It's just like every normal devotion as he was leading the lamb of his, of his father-in-law. That is the day he turned aside to see and he saw a burning bush. That day, he didn't, God didn't start and say, today, if you don't leave the lamb, you will not see a burning bush. He was just going about his normal business. Hallelujah. The Lord is helping us in Jesus' name. There are promptings and there are acts of the Spirit of the Lord that is inside our spirit that if we despise them, in one way or the other, 
we are not going to come into the very great act of God that the Lord has in mind for us, even though those things belong to us. Azumi, the day that God wants to speak to Noah that day, Noah said, see, me, I don't even want to hear anything today. I've been fellowshipping all this while. So that means maybe God will, that is an end. You will not, you will not offer anything that is called the ark that was built. Maybe another person will build it, not Noah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we see the book of Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30? We want to check the KJV and then we want to, want to check the, the Passion Translation. I want us to check something from that. The KJV said, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of of redemption see when you deny the little act of the law that is in the within your spirit apart from you even closing the door to whatsoever it is that the Lord wants to bring you into you know I want to about God is that God is not under pressure God will follow the protocols that he desire to do with a man so God will not use bribe to say ah and if you obey me there are greater things I want to do by this you will be the one to miss out I want us to check the passion translation of this version. I want us to see what the Bible says. It said, the Holy Spirit of God has sealed you in what? In Jesus Christ until you experience what? Your full salvation. So let's read that together. It said, so never grieve the Spirit of God. Or what? Or take for granted His only influence in your life. So the physical God can say, let us pray. And you say, I'm not praying, Jared. It is something, even though that act can lead to even the greater thing that the Lord desires for us to come into, you can easily shut it down. So immediately we start to take the lead to the act of the Lord that seems so little or something that seems so negligible, you can easily dismiss it. Apart from even closing it for yourself, you don't know those lives that are tied to those things. So how many of us are we taking the holy influence of the Spirit of God for granted in our life? How responsive are we to those little, little promptings that don't even seem loud? Or let me say, how many of us even understand the little, little promptings of the Lord that is within our spirit? How many? Acts of the Apostles. Chapter 8, verse 26. Verse 8, 26. I'm about to know this story. The story of Philip, the great evangelist. You know, one of the things we know about Philip, look and tell me one of the spectacular acts we know about Philip. He was transported. Have you? He, was, he disappeared. Like, I remember saying, Lord, let me do, I want to disappear too. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> oh God. He said, And the angel of the Lord say, spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south, unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. 27. He said, And he arose and went, and he behold a man of Ethiopia, an Enoch of great authority. Let's go to verse 28. And was returning and sitting in the chariot and read the Isaiah the prophet 29. And the spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. There's nothing that shows that anything that will be spectacular will happen in the life of Philip. But it was based on an instruction of just go and join. See, don't listen to when the spirit of God will invite you to pray. Let us pray. You don't know so many things that you are denying yourself, Lord, in the Lord. Philip didn't know that anything spectacular will happen. But the instruction was just go and join. God can just say, go and pray. Just go and do this. And you can say, hmm. and one thing about this is that those promptings, they will not come two times at times. So when they don't come, you say, ah, maybe it's my, even my thoughts that said it. And you don't know so many things about it that you have closed up. 
And most time, when those opportunities come, they don't return again. At times, they don't come again. The book of First Thessalonians, chapter five, verse nineteen. I want us to read from the Amplified Version. The Bible said, do not quench the spirit. I mean, when you quench the spirit by you despising his act that seems so small, how can he act? You know, something you have quenched, how will he act? This one said, do not suppress. Or subdue. You know, the Holy Spirit is very powerful. But one thing is that by the will of a man, he can be subdued. If you refuse to yield along the line by which he is instructing you to lead, to live, there is a subduing that will come. There is a suppression that will come. And therefore, even though the Spirit desires to act, he will not be able. Hallelujah. You no, know, this one said. Do not be unresponsive to the working and guidance of the Holy Spirit. And how many of us have failed in this? I say, Lord, why is it that my life is this way? I don't even see anything that is so miraculous about me. Check to see. There are foundations to the great act of God and there are little beginnings that we despise. For Job, in that book of Job, one of the friends of Job said, do your beginning is small there is an assurance that your last time should you are not meant to remain that small there is an expectation and it is that your last time should greatly increase if it is not increasing it is not the fault of god then we should check ourselves how much are we responsive to the workings and guidance of the spirit of god speak to that person lord you know, some of us will even say, God, the Holy Spirit will tell that person, Nay, don't send me. Ah! And you know that that is the act of speaking to someone is what brought Philip into that act of God that was transported. Song of Songs, chapter 5, verse 2. Moda oduro so de kweju. Wale, wale, dari yi jimi olu wami. Wale, wale, waba migbe wa, wami gbe titi olu wa. Oh, oh, ti o fe. The Bible says, I sleep, but my heart wicked. There is the voice of my beloved that knocked, saying, Open to me, my sister, my love, my dove, and my, my own defy. Said, but my head is filled with dews and my locks with the drops of the night. Verse 3. I have put off my clothes. How shall I put it on? I have washed my feet. How shall I defy them? See, one thing that God must rid us of is some excuse that is denial of so many things. Verse 4. My beloved put his hand by the hole of the door and my bow was moved for him. One thing is that Jesus is not an arm robber. He will not kick this door. He will not kick it out. Verse 5. He said, I rose out to open my beloved and my hands dropped with my, my fingers. Verse 6. I opened my beloved, but my beloved has what? Withdrawn himself and was gone. You don't know what you are shutting down when you are despising those little promptings of the Spirit. That first Samuel 
chapter 28, verse 6. The Bible makes us understand something about Saul. That when Saul becomes a persistent man that rebels against God, the Bible says God stops speaking to him by Urim, by the prophet. Every way of communication was shut down. All because those promptings of God over time has been ignored. We are going to cry to the Lord for mercy tonight. That for every instructions of the Lord that seem so small that we have despised and have closed them door, that the Lord will show mercy and it will cause a reopening by His mercy. The little instruction to Adam was, "Do not eat of this food." And what when he go against it? When he go against it, the garden of Eden was shut for life until Jesus came. Just something that seems so little. Can we rise on our feet tonight? Father, show me mercy for every so little small beginnings that I have despised. And Father, by mercy, let those doors be reopened once again. Small acts bring us into the bigger heart of the Lord. Can we ask the Lord this evening? Everyone that have despised, Lord, in mercy, oh God, show me mercy. And those things I should come into, but by the reason of my of, of despising, and that greater end that should come has not come. Father, in your mercy, you will help me tonight and give me such a heart that will listen, such a heart that can understand and know those little movements of the Lord, those little acts of the Lord. Son fait Michel au Dieu du monde Cosi mon akuro Ti ko je ke mi le wi pe Che fe ti re Even as you will read me of every excuse oh God Father help me tonight Oh fe gba ohun owo mi on to show for me mo fi sile fun o se ti re baba she can you raise your voice and cry to the lord reopen o god unto me those channels that has been blocked as a result of disobedience. Let me come once again into the path of life. Can we cry to God? Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Thank you, Father. You will help, oh God. You will help. Can you pray and can you pray? Can you speak to the Lord? Can you pray? Can we ask him to come to us this evening by the power of his word once again? Ancient one, ever true, changing me, and changing me. We have come, we have come, we have come. you desire an impartation by the power of the world, you see that the world will impact you. The 
Lord, there shall be an impartation. Can you cry to God and desire an impartation tonight? Jesus. Raise your heart and say, Lord, I desire an impartation. It's a cry, it's a cry. Whatever you are doing, this is more important. Can you cry to God? I desire. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Heavenly Father, we have come before you to be taught. The Lord spoke to me now that there are processes that we are altered. shapes that some of you whether online on site should come into now you are not in that shape because something stopped and when the season for you to manifest that with the Lord as design came you are not that shape therefore that thing cannot manifest so this evening the Lord is saying the path of mercy is open That which stop shall be restarted. So that again you will come into the shape that God desire. A cycle is come. And then another cycle has come. But I cry to God that let's the required strength come upon you. Yeah. Now, don't take this word for play. You will not miss this season. Yeah. Open your eyes and look at me, Ron. If you can, please give me attention. If you are a sensitive man, you will know that as a family, a season has come upon us. You see, the season is not occasioned by access to platform. The season is not occasioned because we are able to speak high things. The season is, the season is not occasioned because we are able to speak deep things. The season is occasion because we have come into a Kairos moment. Now, when we talk about a Kairos season, I believe you understand that one. We talked to that one last year. Are you with me? Now, you see, there is a design that required alignment expected of a man that has come into his Kairos season. Amen. And that is the demand and the push of heaven. The grace that heaven is pushing across to everyone now. Are you with me? Is the grace to come into the appropriate alignment for the Kairos season. Say it once again. You will not miss this season. <laughs> now, you see, the labels and consistency, faithfulness of the past will be rewarded. Yeah, this a good thing to say, man. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, sometimes we always love to hear the good 
but we don't love to hear the other side. Hallelujah. Now, some persons in this season will also take shape. Huh? They will also take shape. But the shape they will take, we demand that God looks for I'm looking for the English house. God looks for not a substitute. God looks for okay, a makeup without what we are putting, without what we are accurate. Without what we are accurate. Is it a makeup? Okay. You know, when a man is not sufficient for something. Uh, and something is lacking and never still want to show mercy are you with me so he comes into it okay yeah I, I got the word they will argument for some things you know when you argument for something eh? I'm not talking about argumenting how no. I many of you know when you when you argument for something eh Talk to me now. Uh, so, heaven will bring some like augmenting for the shortage. Now, like, a, let me give you an illustration. Like a man that should, that should have an apostolic grace with, a, with prophetic insight and a sharp teaching edge. Are you with me? Now coming into the apostolic dimension with a deep prophetic insight, but can only preach and steer men, but cannot teach. Because over time, when God was bringing him into that season, he missed the class. And the time of manifestation has come, but he has not come into the complete shape. And heaven is looking and saying, our labor should not be wasted. So, let's argument for him. So, are you with me? God will raise another man that will stand as the teacher. But you see, that teaching dimension is the orb of his calling. So, he will own the anointing, but another man will own the orb. Amen. And you know, faithful sons will be coming into portions. The faithfulness of Joseph, even when he was not the firstborn, made him the firstborn. The repentance and commitment of Judah made him to become the prince. He will have lost that destiny. Let me tell you this. Listen to me. There is no man in the ends of God eh, that has a permanent stay on a definite mandate. No man. So there is a replacement for every man. That even the house of Israel, though the covenant of Abraham, are you with me? Praise God. They were replaced for a while. He came unto his own, his own received him. But to them that received him, he gave the power to become what? Now he's telling we are the one. And Jesus looked at them and said, Your house is left unto you desolate. You will not see me on, again until you say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of who? The covenant is on them, but another generation will take up the assignment until they realize it. Has God abandoned them? No. But another people are in their stead now. Be careful. Lift up your hands. A channel of mercy has been opened. I want us to pray to God. 
that there is nothing your mercy cannot do God in this Kyrios season show me great mercy and let those things that are lacking be supplied I want to plead with you not to take this time for a joke or for a play that your heart will be raised indeed in prayers whether online or on site cry to God from the depth of your heart mercy oh God mercy that that which is lacking your mercy will supply do a quick thorough work and cut it short in righteousness can you pray can you cry from your heart to God which is lacking let it be supply of God can you sincerely pray to God from your heart In Jesus name we have prayed now listen uh, is this young man promise is here man. promise is here huh? who is at, um, what's this boy this the one younger brother is peace have it? okay peace is here I am in the, now I see I see their group and the Lord File them, they were in file standing, and God said, A season of ranking has come. He said, But what has been poured in them and what they have received in the last five years will determine their ranking. Amen. So, between now and the end of the year some dimensions will begin to manifest whether it will be shallow or deep things have been poured now what they have housed will begin to speak then among their among those group i mentioned now now there are males and females among the please listen to me if you are everyone of you please give your ears to this if you are 10 years old to 15 and you do come to this gathering please take this season and anyone you know that is of that age range let them take this season very serious now when we announce things like this I'm aware that forces of darkness also heals now you see the prophetic we always announce what God wants to do are you with me so that the enemy also can go to fight now the enemy going to fight will raise the required tools to qualify those set that God wants to use. So what the enemy will do is part of the process. Is somebody listening to me? Is what? Part of the process. So that the Messiah will be announced to come and the enemy will do everything to ensure that he did not come. And when he came, the enemy will do everything to corrupt him. But the doings of the enemy is part of the tools and the marking scheme of heaven to qualify him that indeed we are the Messiah. Now, from that age range, please let them not play with this season because it's a season when oil will begin to come. I see a time frame in the spirit. I will announce it to men that will pray. A time frame has been given in the spirit. There is a wisdom that will bring that thing to pass. Are you with me? There is someone listening to me. That person is here. You were, you, you were on a journey of fasting and seeking God. But 
A time came you stopped. Because one, the complaint of men said you are losing shape and you are losing beauty. You are losing comeliness. Are you with me? And then you stopped. But you were a leg away from the gush you seek. But the Lord said to me, Amen. In the month of March, I will bring mercy. Amen. Not this month. He said March. So that when you engage me again in the month of March, I will bring you to the gush. Close your eyes. I want you to pray that prayer once again. And say, Lord, whatever posture is required of me, in this carrier season, let me be found in that posture. Can you pray? you cry to God? Can you pray to God? Let it come from your heart. You will help me, Lord. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Take this song before you sit down. You are the fire. And I am your sacrifice. Sing it. Consume me, Lord. Oh, consume me, Lord. Lift up your heart and lift up your voice. You are the Aha. Ah, Jesus.
one of the protocols today. Is that what as apostle assigned you? As the spirit led. Okay. Amen. Please sit down. Amen. Uh, by the grace of God, the flyers for part of the Father's Conference and Sons and Daughters Meeting will be out today. Eh? It's out already. That's good. Amen. Amen. And the team is Sons of the Spirit. Sons of the Spirit. Uh, that's from the 17th to 19th of March. I'd like you all to put it in your calendar, structure your time, and at least we invite. 10 of your friends to come. Now, you see, for every son and daughter of prophet Abraham Adeba that the Lord has kept you under our care, it is a compulsory meeting. If you are abroad, if you can come, you should be here. Amen. Um, and we are passing instruction to sons and daughters too that can structure their leave to that time. So that everyone will pro it's a Thursday, Friday, and Saturday meeting is going to be powerful. Uh, by the grace of God, we are going to be having Baba Sheikh Mario. And um, Amen. And Reverend Tolu Agola. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I believe you are also getting set for October. Amen. Amen. Fire will fall. Amen. Among, God, among the ministers, I know you know that my brother Reverend Tolu will be around for 72 hours. And then we are going to be having Reverend Hosting around also. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. 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 There are other men that we are not going to unveil for now. Now, you see, it's not about guest ministers. It's about the dealings of the spirit for the seed. So I'd like you to get your heart set. Because God is set to do a great path work. So it's a season. And if you ask me and say, sir, what is the alignment for now? The alignment for now is the alignment of prayer and attentiveness to his instructions. The alignment of prayers and attentiveness to his instruction. So, are you with me? If you are deaf this season, ask God to open your ears. It's a season when you must not be far from the scriptures because God will be passing instructions. And it's a season to pray. A season to what? Pray. It's not a season to play. Pray. Christ in the place of prayers. Amen. Now, let's go on. Um, last week, let me bring a kind of a review. Last week, we saw it that when the spirit acts, a man is born into a spiritual family. Is that not? Amen. And last week, the Lord brought us to see what it is to be born again. Is that not? Huh? We saw it. And from there we saw that by the act of the Spirit, a stronger influence is introduced on the inside of man that can handle the law of sin and death. How many of you remember? So that by the act of the Spirit, a man is indeed spiritual. If you are still with me, let me hear you say amen. amen. So we pick it up from there. And then today, we move. Um, I'm trusting God that um, this series will come to an end before part of the fans. That's if it, if it pleases him. Then we're going to another thing. Amen. Are you with me? So... Since this act of the Spirit is the reason for 
that path. We want to see some certain things that goes in that line. Now, let me quickly remind you again from the word of God that by the act of the Spirit, are you with me now? Man is born again into the kind of spirit that God is. Hear that again. That by the act of the spirit, man is born again into the kind of spirit that God is. Hallelujah. Amen. John chapter 4 verse 24. I know you know that passage. The Bible says, praise God. Okay, let the Mr. and Mrs. sit beside themselves. Sit beside the husband. Amen. Amen. The Bible says that God is a spirit. God is what? I love King James Version. King James Version says God is a spirit. It is a God is the spirit. So that shows you that there are other kinds of spirits. But God is a kind. Hey, are you here? Yes, you should not, you, this one should not make you confused in any way because I think I've said something along this line some time ago. So I'm just bringing you back into it. It says God is a kind, is a spirit. So there is a kind of spirit that God is. Now, the day the spirit acted on you, sir, huh? you are born again into that kind of spirit that God is. Because essentially, what God desires you to be in the beginning is that you'll be in his image. And what? And likeness. And the Bible showed us that God is a spirit. So it means you are not the image and likeness of God because of your color, because of your height, because of your language, because of your denomination. You are a kind of God and you are in the likeness and image of God because you have become his kind of spirit. We look like God as spirit. Hello? Now, in getting the definition of that spirit, Jesus came and told us that the spirit is the Holy Spirit. Amen. What does the Bible say? Is this? The what? So it is the Holy Spirit that acts. Then you are born into a kind of spirit that God is. And when we began to look at the description of God, Isaiah showed us who he is. He said, holy, holy. Now, when God was giving a description of himself in Leviticus, that was where Peter quoted from in 1 Peter chapter 1. When you read verse 15 and verse 16, you are going to see what Peter said there, that as obedient children, not fashioning yourself, are you with me now? Okay, that's verse 14. As obedient children, not fashioning yourself according to your former lust in ignorance. So when you have heard the gospel, are you with me? An ignorant man, according to the scripture, is not a man that didn't go to school. It's a man that has not had the gospel. So if you're a professor, sir, and you have not had the gospel, and you have not known this matter, you're an ignorant man. Praise God. Amen. So, so, there was a time that you were ignorant. You don't know these things. So you live according to the lusts. Your former lusts. Everything your body asks you to do, you do. Everything your eyes ask you to see, you see. Everything your appetite wants you to go for, you go for it. Everything your, everything your propensity does push you to do, you do. If you say be angry today, you are angry. If you say don't greet anybody today, you won't greet them. Are you with me now? Praise God. If you say lie today, you just begin to lie like the devil. 
And if you say sleep, don't go to church. You hold that. You say, what that is? You say, Bible, drop it. Don't read it today. Go and be watching cartoon. And as old as you are, you sit down and be watching cartoon. Ah, there are some of you like that. Eh? As old as you are, you are still watching cartoon. So you and your friend, you are in the same class. The Spirit of God is saying, go and pray. You are still watching PJ Max. Amen. Amen. And for some people, it is football. May your husband not love Chelsea. Praise God. Any day Chelsea is playing football, just don't come near. His temperature will be high that day. Praise God. And if you want to discuss anything that has to do with money, laundry, and whatever, don't say it that time. Let him cool off. Let it be the following day. Because if Chelsea should lose, you can have more. Only married women can understand what I'm saying. Now, in your former lust, that's it. Now, I want to show you the kind of spirit that God is. So that in the day of your own manifestation, we will see you in that kind. I will still go through it deeply when we go down this message. Now, the Bible says in verse, in verse 15 now, he now said, but as he which had called you is what? So the description of this spirit that God is, when we look at the kind of spirit that God is, according to the scripture, he is holy. So when you are born again into his kind, are you with me now? What we are going to see is a holy kind of spirit. So the Holy Ghost acted on you and you are born into God kind of spirit and the God kind of spirit is a holy one. So it means, praise God. Are you with me? Holiness becomes your definition. We shall see more as we go on. Praise God. Amen. So John brought us back and said, Jesus in his conversation with Nicodemus, John chapter 3, verse 5 and verse 6. And Jesus came and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man is born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Amen. Then verse 6 came. Jesus now said, that which is born of the flesh, what is it? I can't hear you. And that which is born of the spirit, what is it? So you see here that when you are born this way, praise God, you are not born into activity. You are born to be a spirit. Amen. Cat, you people are not here. Do you understand me? Yes, sir. How many of you understand? If you understand, they say amen. amen. Thank you. So we can move on because we trade understanding. What do we trade? It's not many words. High sounding nonsense. You know, when we are traveling to Malete, Rotunde played one high sounding nonsense. How many of you were with me in the car? Don't. Can't you see? Hey. And you see people are jumping. Let's let's leave that. Saying Rema, in fact, okay, don't let me talk. Now, Amen. Now let's say something in First Corinthians chapter twelve, verse three. First Corinthians chapter 12 verse 3 the Bible says wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the spirit of God call it Jesus what a cost so nobody will call Jesus a native man a cost no and 
that no man can say Jesus is the Lord. How many of you remember that the transaction that made you born again is a confession of the Lord? Eh? You don't know? Should we check the scripture and see that one? Eh? Let's go to Romans chapter 10. We are going to come back to this place. Ah, thank you, Holy Ghost. Amen. Romans chapter 10. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 10. Let's read verse 9. Ah. Okay. Verse 9. He said, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord, and the Lord who So, it is not the Savior Jesus. It is the Lord. And when you call him Lord, what does the Lord do? Eh? What does the Lord do? The Lord governs. So, what makes you safe is that you come under a government. Now, um, if you call me your Lord, what are you? I'm talking to you. What are you? You don't know. Uh, if you know it, tell me. Um, don't. Do you know it? What is it? A servant. Be very sure. If you are not sure, I will tell you. You are in a class. So if your teacher asks you a question and you don't know it, if you miss it, he should not laugh at you because that's the reason why you came to class. Hallelujah. So if, if, if you call me Lord, then it means you are my servant. Eh, uh, Abi? And this servant dimension is not a servant that is bullied, enslaved by subtlety or by force against your will. No. It is a servant rule that you came under willingly. So from this one, you will begin to take others and obey others by your will. Now when I say by your will, now you think you can act it. You can do it by yourself. No. It, is, it, is still will, be, it, is, it will still be God in you. Working both to will and to do his good pleasures. Don't worry. You will understand everything. You will not be confused. Are, are you with me? You confess him as Lord and that and believe we are in your heart that God raised him from the dead. So you see, the heart matter that brings salvation, are you with me? The heart matter that brings salvation is to believe that Jesus is no longer in the grave. Uh, hello? Yes, sir. Are you with me? Yes, sir. So what changes the heart? What goes on in the heart is your belief in resurrection. And what actually brings justification and deliverance is your confession of him as Lord. When the two comes together, the Bible said, thou shalt be saved. Now, confession of him as Lord, are you with me? Now, the Bible now took us back into 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3. It now says, Nobody can make this confession. And that no man can say Jesus is the Lord, but by who? I can't hear you. Eh? So the day you confess him as Lord and Savior, it wasn't because you had a will of your own. It was because the Holy Ghost acted on you. On can I say this? Until he has acted, you are not born into faith, you are born into religion. When he acted, that was when you were born again. 
my brother Reverend Tolu said something. Was he Reverend Tolu? I can't remember. I think it was him at the just the ongoing conference now. By now, by now, probably Reverend Austin should be on the pulpit now. That's powerful. I think I need my, I don't know. I forgot it. Praise God. Amen. Please get me one if you can. Praise God. Just get me one if you can. But if there is none, don't worry. I will manage through. Amen. Are you still with me? Now, I think he was, in, in the, he said something. He said, they came to the theological school and they are looking for a pastor. They what? Talk to me. What did I call him? Now, they were not looking for a student. They were not looking for a gate man. They came to the theological college and then they were looking for a pastor and they say, help us get a born again pastor. You didn't hear me. Come. Come. Where are you going? You want to check? Okay. A born Okay, if he's not born again, should he be a pastor in the first place? Huh? I mean, <laughs> oh, you didn't hear me. They say, help us get in a Jodo de Coco. Okay, and they say, help us get a born again Christian. Okay, if he's not born again, how did he become a Christian? So even they say, you see that they tell you, you are born again. You say, yes, fine. Are you a Christian? I'm a Christian. Don't, it is not, there's nothing like born again Christian. Ah! It, that's a confusion. Because a Christian is born again. And a born again is a Christian. So when you say born again Christian, it means there are Christians. So, hello. There are some men that call themselves Christian, but they are not. The spirit has not acted. So they have not been born. They only have Bible name because somebody like Brokeni and Prophet Elijah and Prophet and Evangelist Ezekiel with Apostle attended his naming ceremony and they asked the father, Give this child a name. And the father said, Emily. <laughs> then Apostle Shola Opom took the Bible and read Deuteronomy chapter. 28 and bless the child in the name of the Lord he does not know. So by that they call him a Christian. So when he gets to school and they say, what religion? See, see the humiliation. We turn a lifestyle to become a religion. Say, so what religion do you practice? Say, I'm a Christian. So now we will still have to make the Christian born again. You didn't hear me oh. We still have to make the Christian what? Is that not an aberration? Oh, okay, now we are now saying we are trying to make the snake poisonous. Eh? No, you didn't hear me, Emily. That oh, we caught a snake. We are not trying to make the snake poisonous. If it's a snake, what should you have? How do we know it was a snake? Is it not by the poison? If it does not have a poison, it's a rope. A snake, you didn't hear me. Eh? Eh? Praise God. Uh -uh. Praise God now. Uh -uh. Are you with me? Is that saying, uh, We find a man. But we are still trying to make him a man. Let's leave that one. And let's go. <laughs> so, you understand it now? Now, I, I, I laid this foundation because of what we want to see today as the act of the Spirit. Are, are you, you are in the teaching now, Ba? Yes, sir. So, it, so, when the Spirit acted, by the act of the Spirit, you said, Jesus is Lord. Because... You have been hearing the message for a very long time before you gave your life to Jesus. 
You see, while you have been hearing that message, he has not acted. Or let me say, on the other hand, that you have been rejecting his act, but there was a day he prevailed. So the day he prevailed, you came to the altar and you laid down. And from that day, you are going to discover that there was a switch in your life. Are you following me? Now, initially, when you fight and you insult people, you abuse them, you still feel comfortable with it. You say, Mo Budada. Mo Na. And everybody are praising then you do like this. Heavyweight champion. Mike Tyson. A female Mike Tyson. What do you call him? In a box. Okay, in a box. That man that doesn't know what he's doing. That charlatan. We have a whole lot of them like that. They, they are, they are, you see, the East, eh? when you go to East, and Lagos is becoming like that too. Charlatans. So he has power. How many did he say he has it? I don't know, but he said the one he's using now is Naboski. Naboski. So when he comes to church, he, he, he comes a wrestler. Everybody, everybody just. So when you want to cast out a demon, he carries you like this. He's an undertaker. That's what you have become in the church. In Aboski. And many of you are like in Aboski. Because before you met Christ in Aboski. So when you beat a man, everybody say, hey! Django the Django. You still say, yeah. You still feel good about it. Are you with me? They say the girl is strong, but don't dear. And you too, you look at everybody, you say, dear me. Okay, heat has come here. I mean, you need it, man. <laughs> ah, it's not easy to wear suit. Sorry. I forgot you're a village boy. Please help me put on fan before one man faint here. Are you okay? God bless you. Are you sweating seriously? Praise God. Uh, will you be will you put off that thing so that you can be fine? It doesn't okay. It doesn't need fine. God bless you. You know, when a prophet begins to sweat, be careful. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> are, are you with me? Yes, now, but now, but eventually anything happened, and then you just got angry at someone and you reacted. You feel bad and then you begin to cry. Initially, you will wait for that person to apologize and you can keep malice for 25 years. But now, you cannot sleep a single day because something is here. Now. A life has taken over. Are you with me? So those energy of fighting has not become energy for fasting. How did it happen? There was an act of the spirit that brought into a kind. Now you see, now that that has happened to you, praise God. Amen. 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 How many of you know that it takes the mother that bat a child to nurse the child? Eh? So if you are born by the act of the spirit, amen, you can only be nourished to grow by the act of the spirit. Oh, have you entered into it now? Now because many of you are looking at me and say, sir, won't you talk about power? I will talk about it. Because if you have not talked about power, the equation has, is, the teaching is not yet completed. Are you with me? But I just want you to see that before power, eh, the act of the spirit is a journey. And until our generation understand this, are you with me now? Our summary of who the spirit is will be speaking in tongues. Uh, are you with me?
that's that's real someone. So in the next one we are looking for a man under the workings of the Holy Ghost. We begin to look for a man that has the deepest tongue. And then they say it in a way that will make you feel kind. They have arrived. You get it, man? Huh? There is one deliverance that all of you must have now because I discovered that many of you now, it is these mysteries that desire and pattern your tongues. So if you don't sound like oil, you sound like Theophilus. You have not seen that madness. Eh? It's, it's not bad. They spoke as the Spirit gave them utterance. So it is oil and law and Theophilus giving you utterance now. God bless you. Thank you. So you want to sound like Jesus. God gave him that one. If you do that one, your throat will break. <laughs> and now you want to sound like you are now inviting demons. And the, uh, uh, bro. You are sick, oh. Amen. You know, God must help you to unlearn some things so that you can learn well. Mm. Many of you have not learned well. Maybe you have been listening to my kind of tongues. You are playing to and then you are my minute. If you sound like me, when the demons that are of that rank come, you will repent. You see, the reason why a, a whole lot of people cannot stand the pressure coming upon them now is because they want to sound like a high-ranking man and they don't have the rank for it. The day you wear the uniform of a captain and you don't have the ID card, They catch you at the roadblock. Praise God. What will happen that day? Eh? Now, a whole lot of you, you want to sound like an high ranking man, but you have not gotten that stature. The day the pressure of that level comes on you, you will crash because you don't have the stamina to carry it. That's why. I hate it when another man comes to sound like Baba Deboye. They don't move me. Let Baba come and say, let somebody, you will like it. Even your spirit will respond. How many of you understand what I'm saying? Your spirit will what? Let another pastor come. They'll take the microphone and they want to sound like Baba. Let somebody shout hallelujah. All of us will be doing our business. Why not sound the way the Holy Spirit wants you to sound? Tell that person beside you, say, sound at your level. Uh, at your level. Enjoy your level. It is still the will of God to promote you if you are consistent and faithful. Amen. Now, how did you come into all this thing I'm saying? <laughs> Uh, we came into it because a, a generation must know what the act of the spirit is. So that you don't know it is not about killing you at in Suba. Now, when the spirit, the spirit can give you that one, are you with me? And the whole of your spirit will respond. A amen. Amen. 
there is a sound that when your spirit hears it, something in you will leave. I know that as I begin to speak in tongues now, some, there, some, there are some changes on the inside of some of you. Something in you is forming alignment. No, it, it, it's given to some people to do like that. My son was listening to me yesterday, um, Barry Starimi. He was listening to me yesterday at, at when we are taking the word of God by the mercy of the Lord at IMAC uh, meeting. International uh, Ministers at Place Conference at Okomosho. Praise God. So he said as I was preaching and then suddenly I began to speak in tongues. He said, I, he said, you know, that, ah, the prophetic has taken over. The prophetic has taken over. And then, and then, one thing I saw there was that as that tongue came, the atmosphere changed. Everything shifted. Now, amen. It's good. But can I say this to you? It didn't start with tongues. You know now how we measure spiritual maturity is tongue. That some of you can no longer pray in understanding. So you pray for many hours, but your soul is not communicated to. Because when you pray in understanding, your soul is communicated to. Are you with me? And when you pray prayer of consecration, you don't pray them in tongues too. Abi, can a man make confession in tongues? Eh? You can't. Ah, oh, okay. I want to say, God, show me mercy. I didn't pray. And I said, Hinama, Lem, Bokoti, Yadabas. I have not said. Amen. Our generation has modeled a lot of things up. We must come to the reality of this truth. Lord, I'm dedicating myself to you. You can't say that one in tongues. Because if you say in tongues, we interpreted it to you that this is what you said. Even when we give you the interpretation, you may say, that's not what I said. But when you say it here, yeah, you communicate to your soul and then your soul knows what you have said. Go and check it. Before the fathers burst into tongue, they have communicated well in understanding. And go and check it. They are stronger than our generation. The act of the spirit. Are you with me? So, so you are born by the spirit. Hmm? Then it is only the act of the spirit that can nourish you. If he will not act, are you with me? You will die of spiritual hunger. So you are born again, you will die again. Because hunger can kill. How many of you know that? Praise God. If you don't charge your laptop, what happens? Eh? It will what? Now, when the laptop shut down, if I go to bring it into the animated dimension, what will this happen to it? Eh? It. When we are going to bring it to the animated dimension, and then they, we say this laptop shut down. You know that is computer time. If you are going to animate it, God bless you. We are going to say the computer died. So, if you are not fed, you will die. There's a difference between reading the Bible and being fed by the word. You are not fed until the spirit act. Too. Do you understand me? That was why Jesus said something in John chapter 5. So I want you to understand. A lot of you say, but sir, I am reading the Bible. But it seems not. No, no, no. It is the act of the spirit that makes the scripture to feed you. Can we, can we, can we say something? John chapter 5. Is that verse 39? Let's read verse 39. John 5, 39. Let's see. Is that 39? Aha. Please open your Bible and mark it in your Bible. If it has not been marked before. Mm. 
holy words. Emily, I sing that song. Words of life, uh -huh. give us strength. Where we run, ancient world will gather. Oh, ancient world. I love that song. Ever to. Oh, changing me and changing me. We have come. We have. I can hear you. Sing it from your heart. We have. Oh, oh, There is an impartation by the word. It's stronger than hands being laid on you. Because that's the scripture being laid on you. And when the scripture is laid on a man, it gives birth according to the spirit that wrote the scripture. Ah! May God lay his word on you. I can hear you say loud, amen. When you are imparted by the word, you know what happens to you? Should I tell you? Amen. Then the word will become flesh. The word will become flesh. He said, he said here, now listen, he said, search the scripture, which means you are searching the scripture. For in them you think you have what? And they are that which testify of me. So it means, are you with me now? An academical search of the scripture does not give a man life. It takes the spirit to act on it. Then you are fed. Many of you have read the Bible this week, but you have not eaten once. Tell the person beside you, spirit act on the scripture. Okay, say it, say it as a confession. Say, say Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Oh, come on, come on. You can talk now. Say Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. That I might be fed. Act on the scripture. How many of you are gaining wisdom here? So the scripture is a passage into life but until the spirit act on it, it is under lock and key. It will not open. Ah, yeah, yeah. Come. May I hold my hands? In the name of Jesus, I speak upon your life as a prophet of God. Because I'm doing this by the word of God, not by my words. Let the words from the scripture that the men that God is sending you to, from today, let it be open unto you. <laughs> what will make nations to run to you? And they will be fed by you. No matter where you are, let it come upon you now. Yeah. And the Lord is saying to you, the Lord is saying this to you. He asked me to tell you that from today, I open the scriptures unto you. Amen. 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 Yeah. Listen, that's the second to the last installment you need for your job. Remaining one. And when that one comes, then God will set you loose. So at that time, you will run. And men that you think have gone ahead, you overtake them. By one step, just a single pace, you overcome them. You know why? Because you have been thoroughly furnished for a supernatural speed. This is the sign that we show you. Are you with me now? 
that the last installment of that which God wants to come upon you has come. Uh, 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 are you with me? Uh, okay, see me. Hallelujah. Are you here? Your journey will no longer be delayed. Yeah. Amen. I, I think something has been activated in the house tonight. Let's go. Amen. So you see here. Have you seen it here? Now, so it, 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 it's, it's here. It's here. Amen. Now, when you were born by the Spirit, you still have a body. So hunger will come on this body. Now, you see, one of the things you must understand is that the act of the body is a window to the need of the spirit. I will explain what I mean by that. So if your body can feel hunger, it means your spirit can also be hungry. If you are, if you, if you hunger after food, it means after natural carnal food that fills your natural carnal body. Amen. How many of you know that if a man is on seven days biri biri, no food, no water, it will take an extraordinary energy of the spirit for him to minister the way of ministry? Yes, sir. Amen. Though I can shock you now that if you ask me what have I eaten, what have I eaten today? Eh? What do? cashew nut? Okay, pepper, spice cashew nut. That was all I ate today. You see, my daughter did like this. <laughs> I was hungry and there was no food. Okay, I think I ate banana too. About two or two or three. With cashew nuts, spiced one, peppered one. With water. Is that not enough food? <laughs> this Ghana man said no. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> now, 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 that is the same way the day your spirit will no longer need food, then you are dead. Anytime you sense that you have lost appetite for the word of God, it's a sign of spiritual death. Lift up your two hands to God. Lord, I ask that in your mercy by the force of the Holy Ghost ah bojo banro kori ko adide sitam bojo banro kori ko adide hemi mi ma so kale wa sa ye wa dotun ah bojo banro kori ko adide I speak in the name of Jesus. Let the revival hit your spirit. Let the revival hit your soul. In the name of Jesus Christ. Are you here? Sit down. So, now, hallelujah. When you feel lonely, you want to talk to someone. It's a window to what your spirit needs also. That there are many times that you have physical company, but your spirit is lonely. Your spirit wants to walk in the company of other spirits that are of his kind. Hear me? Your spirit wants to walk in the company of other spirits that are of his kind kind and don't forget that I said his kind is the kind of God so he wants to walk in the company of the Holy Spirit and the spirit of the just man made perfect he wants to walk in the company of angels but you have deprived him so he's lonely and in the days when your spirit is lonely are you with me now your soul will begin to desire mundane things of the earth you people are not here so sex will become attractive, food will become attractive, gist will become attractive, television will become attractive. 
things that are kind of will become attractive. What you don't used to think before will begin to come to your head. Your soul can even give you vision of a sister you should marry. Even when God is not talking about marriage. You are not here. May you not say I do when God is saying not yet time. Amen. Hey, you understand? Yes, sir. Ay, ay, ay. Kande le bo saba kwa talima. Remanso le kwa barate. Nasika kwa telebazua. What is it that you have been yoked with that is sucking you dry? Tonight, there is a separation. In the name of Jesus Christ. A cloud upon this gathering now. Oh, fire, Holy Ghost, fire, burn everywhere. Oh, oh, oh. Children! 
Amen. 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 If you can listen to me, please listen. Now, so Jesus came in responding to the tempter when hunger came. Are you with me? Amen. When hunger came, the hunger came and opened it to Satakuba. A cloud is forming upon this town. It will rain in some days to come. And there will be a change in face. Oh, there will be a change in face. There will be a change in face. There will be a change in face. I bring a new season upon this community. Say the Lord of hosts. I change time. I change season. There is going to be a shift. Now, wherever, wherever you are, there is a shift where you are now. There is a shift. Ah, there is a family listening to me now. Your Lord is changing for the good. For the best. Ah. Everything is turning around. Everything is turning around. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Please, let's continue. Because if we go like this, we'll not be able to teach. Amen. And I wanted to talk some things. Now, listen to me. Listen. Now, Jesus came and said, Man shall not live by bread alone. That's Matthew. Matthew chapter 4. He said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That's how a man lives. So it means if you will be nourished. As a born spirit, what do I call it? Because until we, until we begin to call you by your name, you will not respond, bro. Elijah, if you are walking on the street and somebody begin to say, "Alaji, Alaji, Alaji," will you respond? But if someone say, "Elijah, Oyeleke," what will you do? You will talk. Now, until we begin to call you what the Bible calls you, you will not respond to the world. You are spirit. Are you with me? Now, listen to me. Listen. Listen. As a born spirit by the act of the spirit, Jesus said, you will not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed from the mouth of the Lord. Now, in giving definition of what the word is, Jesus showed us what the word is. John chapter 6, verse 63. Let's see, what is the word? John chapter 6, verse 63. He said, it is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh profited nothing. Now, here he said the word 
words the words i speak up to you what are they they are spirit and they are life ah! so it means are you with me amen amen you are a born spirit by the act of the spirit feeding on a spirit by the act of the spirit so that you can live the spiritual life so excuse me ma'am this thing you are holding are you with me is a spirit not a book amen ah do you understand what is it not the day you see it that way that the day you begin to touch the life amen so the day you open it you are actually opening the speakings of a spirit a amen woman being we feed on woman food have you a spirit being also we feed on spirit food and this is spirit food but it does not open unto you until the spirit acts how many of you how many of you how many of you have come into it now do you understand it now do you understand it now ah, I have a wonderful treasure the gift of God without measure and we will travel together my Bible and I the first thing that must enter your bag is what? If you are still with me, let me hear you say amen. amen. You know, I've told you that the prime index of this, you now how we know that you have begun to live the spiritual life is that what we are going to see in you is, is righteousness and true holiness. What are we going to see? And what? It is not fake holiness. It is not holiness by removing your rings and lost is still inside. How many of you understand what I'm saying? It is not holiness by tying scarf. But your mind is not tied up. A loose mind, but with a tied headgear. Itani oti was okoto amo wonu. It's not that one. It's not this one that you like. Ah, I will be free from prophet every day, and I will dress anyhow. Like you see, if you are, <laughs> if you are like that, your holiness is fake. Heaven sees you what you are thinking in the future. And that's how they define you. You know, I told people today. I said I've gotten another measure for the skirt of my daughters now. Another measure. So if your skirt is not according to that measure, you go and buy new ones. <laughs> A Amen. Don't be creative with that sound. And if you sweat a gown, and if it's not according to that measure, don't come to my household. Somebody says, sir, is it by force? Don't worry. The kingdom of God sovereign what? <laughs> so we take it by force now. <laughs> That's on a lighter mood. Before, because I know I'm on I'm online. Before somebody will now quote my word and say, Did you hear what Prophet Abraham said? Amen. Now I, I, I'm only trying to let you know that you see, sometimes you are decent outside, but you are indecent within. That's fake holiness. Very quiet 
quiet on the outside but outspoken on the inside. Heaven is saying you are noisy and you are lousy. But you say, but sir, I don't used to talk. They... So Ephesians chapter 4 showed us that pattern. Ephesians chapter 4. Read from verse 20. Then we we'll read to verse 24. He said, he said, but you have not so learned Christ. You have not so learned Christ. Verse 21 now said, if so that you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. Verse 22 now. He said that you put off concerning the former conversation. The what? Old man which is corrupt. You see, that man cannot be repaired. He is corrupt. He is corrupt. He is a cancer. Everywhere he touches it, it will damage the tissue. He is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. Verse 23 now, that's where he say, he say, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Verse 24, which is the last verse we are going to read there. He said, and put on the new man. Who here? The new man. Which is after who? God is created in righteousness and true holiness. That's the prime factor. That was why when Angel Gabriel came to announce to Mary in Luke chapter 1 verse 35, he said, the Holy Ghost shall come upon you and the power of the eyes shall overshadow thee. He said, the holy thing. What did he call it? I can't hear. What did he call it? He said, the holy thing. So the prime index of a man feeding, being fed by the act of the spirit for a spiritual life. How we are going to know that what you have is a spiritual life? Eh? Is that it will be called a holy thing. Because God is a spirit and his kind is a holy spirit. It's a spirit that is holy. So, when you are now walking in the spiritual life of his kind, what we shall see is not holiness by force, but holiness by reality. Are you with me? Holiness by what? It is not holiness by garment. It's not because we wear white suit with white shoes and white socks and white belt. If not for trouble, you will have put on white tie. So everything is white, Baba white. Oh! It is... Please, are you with me? It is not holiness by... I understand discipline. When a man breaks himself under discipline, I understand that one. Are you with me? Praise God. But that discipline will be, will be powered by the Holy Ghost. It will not be powered by the energy of self. Many of you don't know that there's a difference between a man who and born again. Let's come to class. Are you with me? That's it. Omonuabi is a rebranded man, a rebranded old nature, trained to add good. To what? Add good, but it's not good. But a born again, are you with me now? Is a man that his old self have been put to rest, that is dead. Now a new man has taken over. That's the difference between the two. Until death or cause, you are not born again. That's it. A new life is born on the inside of you. It, 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 it will not manifest until death or cause. Until the old is taken away, the new does not manifest. Too. That is it. That's the prime whatever. I have to take you back so that you understand this. So as you feed by the act of the spirit and you are nourished and you grow in this spiritual life, what we are going to begin to see is righteousness and true what? Not more tongues, but more holiness. 
are, are, are you with me? Will you speak in tongues more? Yes. Will you have more power? Yes. But whatever we measure is more righteousness and more holiness, not more power. Because in the realm of power, when you search, are you with me now? You will still find other spirit there. The only realm you cannot find any other spirit is, is, is the realm of holiness. Uh, are you with me? Oh. The, the realm you cannot find any other spirit is the realm of true holiness. But when you come to power, you find them there. They can still manifest power to some level. Ah, what is it that makes a man bring fire out of his mouth? Is it no power? So e e even in the realm of power, you still find shango. Uh, what makes a man drink or show water? And then he comes to follow you and say, I have a child. Is it no power? So you still find some other spirit in that realm. Yes, there is a higher realm of power that you are going to operate in. When we come to that one, when we begin to speak about the act of the spirit that brings power, we are going to bring you to that. But listen to me. Do we still find other spirit in those realms? If it is the realm of intelligence, there are intelligent men that they get their intelligence not from God. So great and the rest of them didn't know Jesus. And when you read their philosophy, you will say these men are great thinkers. There were great thinkers after the fall. So you, when you start, you see, there is a measure of God that is in the realm of intelligence. But if you are going to find God, and the only one you are going to find in that realm, then you are going to know that, oh, you are the only one in this class. It is the realm of holiness. So when a man begins to grow spiritually, whatever measure is holiness. In holiness, sit down. In righteousness, in obedience, I will walk with you. Amen. I want to descend down a bit so that I begin to show you. Amen. things so I haven't seen that his word are spirit and they are life are you with me now so he takes the spirit to feed you have you he takes the spirit to feed you that was why he spoke to us in second Corinthians in first Corinthians sorry first Corinthians chapter 2 when you read from verse 9 he said, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. He said, but it is written, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Neither has he entered the heart of man. Those things that the Lord has prepared for them that love him. Then verse 10 say, he said, but God has revealed them to us by his spirit. For the spirit searched all things. Yeah, the deep things of God. Now verse 11. Verse 11 says, for what man knoweth the thing of a man save the spirit of the man which is in him even the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God verse 12 now see it how we are fed by the spirit he said now we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit which is of God that we might know the things that are freely given to us the tree of knowledge of good and evil was not given to man but every other three were given to him by the spirit we know what are given to us so it is the spirit that search it out and say this one is your meal eat it are you with me hello church who does the search he prepares the food then he will bring it to you and say eat so, amen. Now, there is a soul reading, I love it, from Genesis to Revelation. Are you with me? But when you pray, you can say, come with me to Matthew. And when you get to Matthew, he opens Matthew up. And as you begin to, he opens your eyes and then you begin to see. And let me tell you this thing, you feed at your level. He feeds you at where? At your level. Amen. 
Amen. Are you with me? Praise God. God forbid that my son and your friend eat the measure and the and the, the measure of food that we eat now. Did you hear me? The measure of Amala we eat, and my son eat it. Won't there be crisis? Eh? Talk to me. Okay. You say, Prophet, you can eat, you know, and your friend can eat your food. Okay. Amen. 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 Say amen now. Amen. Somebody say loud amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't want to offend people. I don't want to offend you. Okay. Now, a mighty man like Brother Solomon, that if you put the whole of this building in his tummy, it will show. Amen. Amen. Now, the measure of food he will eat. Now, my son, I first say he wants to eat it. That will be feeding beyond his capacity. So he feeds you at your level. He will come and give you the things that belongs to you and say, eat. That is when you are fed. That's when you are what? Please, I'm not see listen, listen, listen. I've started reading from Genesis again. I think I told you. And every time I open it, it thunders. For I love studying behind my the car, my the, in my car. I just lock up and stay there. Even if it is hot, let me sweat. It's no problem. And if the heat is becoming too much, I switch on the engine, then put on the air condition. So when it's cold, I put it off. I continue my study. Are you with me? Then heaven will open. Then it begins to give me one after the other things to eat. 